The Necromancer. A highly sought out title for clearing the deep dungeon, Palace of the Dead. Entirely solo. I've wanted this title for a very long time. And I finally decided I'm going to do it. This is my journey to become a necromancer. This isn't a guide, by the way. There are way more qualified people out there with guide form content for deep dungeons like Finn, Angelus, and Maggie. But maybe if you're wanting that title yourself or you have the title and you want to hear my opinion, then this video should prove insightful to you. I'll talk about what helped me personally overcome this challenge and what kind of commitment I put into it. So the early flaws. Oh boy. These are such a drag but they have a certain charm to them. A charm I'm glad isn't repeated in future deep dungeons, but a charm nevertheless. The reason for this is because a Palace of the Dead has 200 floors, and if I want that prestigious necromancer title, I'm going to have to start at floor one as a level one. Because you see, deep dungeons are somewhat akin to a roguelike, and for Palace of the Dead, you start as a level one on floor one. Unlike future deep dungeons, which start you at a higher level and are condensed into only 100 floors, every time you wipe in a deep dungeon, you fail and have to go back to floor one. And that's what makes these early floors such a drag, especially for Palace of the Dead. If you've maxed your Aether Pool weapons and armor to 99, this is Deep Dungeon's gear by the way, which is upgraded from silver chests, and you have a basic understanding of Deep Dungeon, Palace doesn't really pick up until floor 101. And even then, at this point, you're just farming Pomanders. These are helpful consumable items that provide a variety of benefits. The enemies, bosses, and timer is just not an issue here. These things do become an issue, however, at floor 161. And this is where you need to think about the Poms you've hoarded up until this point and how to effectively use them in a resourceful and time efficient manner. So that's basically 100 floors of just a slog. But the resource management that comes into play at floor 161 is what makes Deep Dungeons feel truly special because you don't get this from any other form of content in the game. Every run is different and adapting to situations is never the same due to conditional debuffs the floors get or what job you're playing. As a warrior, I seriously struggled when the floor gave me amnesia. This disables all abilities like Berserk and Infuriate and all of my defensive cooldowns. My choice here was always different though. Was I struggling for time? Well, this is a great opportunity to use a rage, transforming me into a manticore that one shots mobs. Or maybe I wasn't struggling with time, so I'd either use a strength which increases damage dealt to keep up a good pace or just soldier through it with no commanders. Or maybe I got a damage down debuff, but the floor also came with a gloom effect, which buffs every enemy with increased damage and damage reduction and a faster movement speed. Well, time to use a serenity, which cleanses the entire floor of debuffs. Because if this was a high kill floor, it could take me anywhere from 5 to 11 kills just to unlock the key into the next floor. And that would take me so much time with a damage down and a gloom. Still, this decision making feels truly unique and makes Palace of the Dead the enjoyable experience it is, despite the 100 floors of Slock. Before I start making this sound like a weird review of Palace, how was my actual experience? Well, Palace took me three full-fledged attempts. My first attempt, I used the Maggie's Deep Dungeon document, which teaches some basic and advanced knowledge on mechanics, enemies, and bosses of Deep Dungeon. This was a good starting point for me and helped me reach all the way to floor 199. The furthest I've gotten and my demise was a gloomed mimic, with items disabled and no serenity as I used it on the previous floor on an auto heal disabled. Possibly my biggest mistake this run, and if you don't know, that's probably the worst thing to use serenity on, especially as a warrior. I mean, what the hell? My thought process was user rage on 198, and I didn't want to risk the auto heal disabled in case of a landmine, but like, that's why you just carefully pull the mobs even with a rage, so you don't risk a bunch of auto attacks and then stepping on a landmine. But I lacked this kind of knowledge, and when you don't have that kind of hindsight, these mistakes are bound to happen due to just nerves. Overall, I would have easily made this run as I had like 12 minutes on the timer on floor 199, so if I didn't make these mistakes with my pums, then I would have probably got through. 
In my next run, I got to floor 198 and timed out. Maybe it was due to my mistake on the 180 boss behemoth. This boss starts to spam cast meteors at around 15%. So the idea here is to use a lust, transforming me into a succubus, and then applying five stacks of vulnerability on the boss at around 20%. Then slowly push behemoth to exactly 15%. Once he starts to cast an ability, I start to push him and the meteor spam begins. This deals around 80% of my health every meteor and cannot be mitigated. But warriors can survive four meteors before meeting their demise due to the insane amount of self-healing. The problem was I was just below 80% of my HP and proceeded to die. I did have a Pomander of Raising active, which auto-resurrected me, but then time was a serious issue, so I had to pump out resources here, use another strength, a steel, and a lust just to make it in time. I did manage to kill Behemoth, but this did put me back on Poms for the hardest set of floors, floors 181 to 190. The thing about these floors is they are just the worst. Chimera patrols with spongy HP pools, and things can go really self if you pull more than one of these guys due to Ram and Dragon's voice. Dragons that do disgusting amount of damage to even a tank because of their dot and auto damage. Enemies that give you the slow debuff, which actively slows you down. Worms with tight enragers that will deal massive damage if not killed quickly enough or stunned at the right time. It's just a lot. And to top it off, you even have a boss at the end. Although not mechanically difficult, this boss hits like a truck and can take quite a bit of time to kill. So you'll need time and maybe even some resources like a steel and a lust to get through. Because this set of floors is so nasty, it was really important for me to basically have a POM active for each floor that could actively help me keep up a good pace. But I didn't have this knowledge. I didn't have many POMs, and the ones I did have I spent poorly due to my past mistakes and feeling rushed. So even though I got past this set of floors, my POMs were incredibly bleak going into floors 191 to 198, and I inevitably ran out of time. In a last ditch effort, I did run through a floor praying for a rage, but all I got were mimics, and I proceeded to die. So two attempts down, both attempts I got incredibly far but failing on 191 plus. What the hell is going wrong? I've been told this is the victory lap, yet I've wiped twice now. So to further expand my knowledge, I did something I thought I'd never do, because I felt like I didn't really need it. I watched a 6 hour VOD of a well versed deep dungeon creator Finn. This VOD was made in a guide format and went over everything I needed to know as a warrior doing this and more. Like literally everything I could hope to know was explained in this video and it really surprised me just how much there is to know about solo Palace of the Dead and deep dungeons in general. I learned how to better manage my palms in time, certain decision making and how to keep up a good pace, trap placement and how to use landmines to my advantage, and just a prolifera of tips and tricks to handle certain mobs and so much more. You might think, damn, six hours? Reality is I watch portions of each floor just to get a general idea. Although I do think a lot of the advice that Finn talks about in this VOD in particular is really valuable. So studying the entire thing is definitely not a bad idea, but still six hours. I know it's a lot. But after two attempts getting to floor 199 and 198, that is nothing. And like mentioned, I learned so much and it's something that you could just watch on the side while doing other things, which was perfect for me. And that's another thing that really amazed me about Deep Dungeon. There are so many content creators out there covering this kind of content with super helpful resources like Finn, Angelus, Maggie, and a bunch of Twitch streamers who are welcome to answer Deep Dungeon related questions. Uh, either way, not to get too off topic, but the Deep Dungeon community is hella nice and helpful. Probably the kindest community I've had the pleasure of interacting with on this game, and honestly I don't think I've heard of any Deep Dungeon community related drama, and I can't say the same for other communities. So, third attempt, and this was the one. I was ready. My knowledge fully expanded, I sped through floors 1 to 100, focused on farming pomanders at floor 101 to 160, and only using stuff when overcapping. Floors 161 plus, I focused on being resourceful, only using stuff when I really needed it to keep up a good pace. Floors 171, I started off with some sites which revealed the entire floor layout and traps, then proceeding to use landmines up to floor 173. This got me way ahead on the timer, so then I could just chill and take my time, again just using stuff when I needed it. Floors 181 plus, the hard set, I made sure to use a POM on each floor to keep a good pace up. Strengths, flights, alterations, etc. This in turn paced me really well, but didn't completely exhaust me of my POMs. And probably to complete sheer luck, but maybe also partially to my newfound knowledge, I had a ton of pomanders going into floor 191, and it was an absolute cakewalk, finishing the run with an insane 26 minutes remaining. And then it finally happened. The Necromancer title was finally mine, and it felt amazing. I did it. I earned this. Through hours of determination and stuff, 
stubbornness, failing and going right back in, not letting it take a toll on me. Instead, I used every failure as an opportunity to learn and grow, and that makes it all feel worth it. And I can say with absolute confidence, I enjoyed this. If you asked me before I challenged myself with this or during my runs, I'd say I do this once and then never again. But now I feel captivated by this content. It is genuinely fun, and the community surrounding Solo Deep Dungeon is incredibly kind and helpful. This might be due to the nature of the content, but everyone wants each other to succeed and get those prestigious titles and high scores. Not only do I hope to provide some insight into the content itself with this video, but also the community, and maybe give you the push to try and get into this content. Is it time consuming? Sure. But you can take breaks in between each set of floors, and they'll only last an hour at most, so it's really accessible even for those with a busy lifestyle. Just don't disconnect mid-run. You'll lose all your progress, and that really sucks. Anyways, this is where I stopped talking. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, make sure to check me out on Twitch where you can catch me live, and like always, thank you Patreons for supporting the channel further. Social links can be found in the description below, but with that, goodbye. Oh, and make sure to subscribe. Bye bye now.